You're listening to music of excellence only on love and inspiration. And of course, His grace and mercy follows us every day. That's right. God really loves us so much that His mercy is new every day for us. We don't need to fear. All we have to do is just wake in the morning and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for waking me and uh, realizing that I am a wonderful gift to the world. And uh, once you've got that in your mind and your heart, you cannot go wrong even though you know you may feel face the challenges that we all have to face including myself i face challenges every day and uh you know i thank god for his spirit i thank god for what he does in my life and for course you know placing persons around me that actually helps me to stay uplifted and that's my beautiful wife of course dr nico Erme francis cotton my mom uh, my parents you know as it is and friends actually but you've got to really choose your friends wisely persons who really want to uplift you well ladies and gentlemen it gives me great pleasure to of course introduce you to two persons right a power couple live out of atlanta georgia and they are right now ready to get into this very very powerful conversation that we're going to have together and I really want to invite you wherever you are to sit back, relax, and turn the volume up. You know, make sure you uh, have went to the kitchen already, got your glass of water, etc. Because this is going to be very interesting. Because I'm going to be speaking to Mr. Sean J. Harris and Tara Harris out of Atlanta, Georgia. And you're going to hear all about these really wonderful uh, persons who are already on air. So uh, let me just uh, connect with both of them. And I'm going straight live over to these wonderful uh, folks right now. Good afternoon, Tara. And, uh, of course, uh, Mr. Sean J. Harris. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Roy. How's it going? Good afternoon. I'm doing very well. Good afternoon to you over there in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I'm pretty sure you've already had a lovely uh, Sunday thus far. Yes, we are. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, great stuff. I'm really happy to connect with you. As I was uh, sharing a while ago with the wonderful listeners here on St. Martin, and of course the Eastern Caribbean who's listening, and the world on www.pjd2radio.com, it's really a pleasure to connect with both of you. I stated to uh, the listeners uh, before the interview that I would be speaking with both of you. And, um, you know, having you on the show today, is really a pleasure because i know sean and tara you you know because of your very busy schedule uh it's uh, not always easy to connect with you so um i know there's a little bit of a delay but uh, just uh, let me know if you can hear me at this point in time very loud and clear yes we hear you loud and clear okay well let me just introduce you to uh, the listeners out there so they have an, an idea of who i'm speaking with today sean j harris is a former non-commissioned officer in the united states air force serving during the persian gulf war he was born in Atlanta, Georgia. He is the second of three children. Sean has an extensive and diverse background in aerospace, propulsion, law enforcement, and real estate. Sean is a serial author of 15 books. Sean has helped many businesses owners start their businesses from their inceptions. And Sean feels that it is important to create financial literacy and to create a firm foundation for business ownership at an early age. Sean comes from a family of entrepreneurs, and uh, Sean and his family live in Atlanta, Georgia area. Now, today, Sean provides, and his family, it was pro the ownership that he has, today's business ownership is providing uh, Sean and his family with what they desire most, freedom to choose and to have the time to pursue their purpose on this earth, which allows him and his wife and children to live a purpose-driven life. So that's you, Sean. And uh, next to you is your lovely wife, Tara Harris. And let's uh, see uh, what is stated about Tara here. And uh, I'm pretty sure the listeners will also be very interesting to hear this. Tara Harris uh, grew up in uh, Simna, Georgia, but now resides in Stone Mountain, Georgia, with two sons, a daughter and husband, which is, of course, Sean. She is a United States Navy veteran serving two, uh, serving two during two wars, Iraq freedom and Afghanistan war on terror. After completing active duty, Tara returned to Georgia and completed a degree in health information technology. She worked with 
and is passionate about special needs kids and adults. She worked with special need families for 10 years. Now Tara and her husband are on a mission to help as many families as they can become financially literate by developing multiple streams of income. She also manages two of her children's fast-growing businesses. And Tara is also available for consultations. And, uh, you know, of course, if that's what you would like to uh, be able to do, we can uh, share that later on, of course, with the listeners. So, Sean and Tara, wow, two dynamic people. A uh, dynamic couple here on air and you're in the right place because this is love and inspiration where you can empower and inspire not only listeners in St. Martin, but in the whole world. So let me just turn the flow over to uh, let's start with the ladies first. Tara, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So Tara, as I just shared with the listeners a little bit about your um, past, I just want to just kick in with the first aspect was that you... Um, are United States Navy veteran and you served during two wars, Iraq freedom and Afghanistan war and terror. Now, just because persons might be thinking, wow, really you did that? Can you just share with us a little bit about how was that experience, uh, you know, for you um, being in such a place and then we can move on just to get a little bit of an idea because today we see you and you, you, you're you by Sean's uh, side, you're doing great stuff, but that's a whole different turn. Yes, well, I, I went to the Navy because after spending 12 years in school, I knew I wasn't ready to go to college yet. And so I joined the military because I knew I could travel. I get money for school if I wanted to go to college later. And I got to do something honorable for my country. And while it wasn't easy, you know, I had to leave my oldest son um, back here in the States while I went out to one of those wars and he was only six months old. So that was hard and you know, it, I, it was hard for me, but after getting out of the military, I realized the experience grew me as a person and make me who I am today. Mm, talk about uh, an experience, of course, uh, and you stated that that was a, a challenge to do, to, you know, have to leave uh, someone that you love so much uh, behind, but also at the same time having to make that choice to serve your country. Uh, as I'm hearing that from you, Tara, um, that already talks about that you have to make decisions sometimes that, you know, may be challenging, but at the same time, when it comes to having to serve, you know, once you are called to serve, you have to step out and do that. Absolutely. I, I prayed every time I was out to sea or in a, in a war zone, in a, getting in a hazardous area, and God brought me through. All right. Well, I really appreciate you sharing that with me um, and the listeners. And I'm just going to come back to you in just a little bit, uh, Tara. But let me just uh, move over to Sean, because you've also got an experience, too, um, in the United States Air Force. And uh, just to give the listeners a little bit of a, an idea on what is what, I, I know there's a little bit of a delay, so hopefully you can be able to um, send your message across uh, quicker so that we will have the delay. Go ahead, Sean. Yes, uh, s same thing like with Tara. You know, when I was uh, in high school, you get the infamous talk from your parents. You have three choices to either go to school, uh, get a job, or go to the military. And at the time, I just didn't want to continue in the school system, want to take a break, and uh, didn't want to go get a job because I don't like being told what to do. So I uh, decided to go to the Air Force, and of course, they still told me what to do. But it gave me an opportunity to grow up and uh, travel the world and just be able to learn some new things. Uh, I learned very quickly how to become an adult, a responsible adult, as far as maintaining uh, living arrangements, being able to eat, and, um, you know, just be able to budget finances and to just see the real world as an adult and not be under the umbrella of my parents pretty much being responsible for me. And uh, I thoroughly enjoy serving the country, uh, met a lot of great friends, you know, just traveling the globe and uh, being able to learn about aircraft, which has always been a passion of mine. So I, I really enjoyed it. I think I made the best decision for me at that time and uh, no regrets. Mm, that sounds really interesting, actually, because once again, I'm also hearing from your end that it all uh, pertains to, uh, again, serving your country, being called to serve and, uh, you know, without any hesitation uh, going forward to do that. I also uh, must also recognize to Sean that uh, you 
um, had some experience too in the law enforcement. Were you an officer at some point in time? Yes, well, when I got out of the military, I always wanted to just kind of fulfill a childhood dream, which is going into law enforcement. So I, I knew I wanted to be a business owner, but I just had to get that urge to be in law enforcement out there and see if that was something I wanted to pursue. And uh, I saw a lot of things, went through a lot of different experiences, uh, actually delivered a baby uh, as a police officer. So I just had an uh, opportunity to do a lot of creative, cool things, meet a lot of people, uh, but it also gave me a perspective also in life just to see different uh, backgrounds, different ways of life, you know, see people in different situations, unfortunate situations uh, as well. Uh, I, I witnessed things that I kind of wish I hadn't as far as uh, death and law enforcement, fatalities. And I think the biggest thing that really bothered me the most being in law enforcement was to be in a position to see children hurt. Hmm. Uh, I had a car accident, uh, scene that I responded to, and the little child was decapitated. So, you know, that always bothered me. But after a while, you have to kind of grow numb. Hmm. But I could never grow numb to children being hurt. But, you know, adults, as far as going on a homicide scene or a suicide scene, I was able to kind of kind of compartmentalize that, if you will, to be able to make it in that profession. It's a very hard profession, and um, but I, I wanted to kind of have an exit strategy, and that's why I went into businesses for myself. I see. And uh, even though, you know, it had been challenging in some ways, and uh, as you stated, you know, you don't want to actually see children in such situations, uh, uh, you know, as you, as you stated earlier, um, in, in, a, in a way, you actually uh, did give your your best and you also served and uh, i'm pretty sure the persons that you got in contact with uh, including tara uh, during her time of service uh made a difference in those persons lives and that's something that you know is in that invaluable and uh, you know that cannot be reversed actually Absolutely. Oh, I'm really happy to have you on the program. And for those who are just tuning in for the first time, this is, of course, Love and Inspiration Life with your host, Roy Cotton Jr. And I'm connected with both Sean J. Harris and his uh, lovely wife, Tara Harris, live from out of Atlanta, Georgia. I do apologize for the little bit of the delay. Uh, you know, it could be as it is with our Internet services. Um, it's just uh, that challenge that you have sometimes with the streaming, but we still have them on board with us. Now, Sean, I just want to just check in with you. Um, not only that you are a business uh, person, but you are also a dad. And uh, next to your side, you have a lovely wife who is a mom, uh, parents you are. And uh, I know you, you're very you know, um, busy as an uh, entrepreneur, uh, author, but can you talk to our uh, wonderful listeners on the importance of today, even though you may have so much to do, how important it is to really uh, look at spending that time with your family? And we're going to get a little bit more into what you do with your two children. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Roy, as a matter of fact, I just did a YouTube video yesterday talking about the importance of balancing your life between business and family. You know, a lot of, you know, the kids have their own businesses. I have multiple companies as well. But what we realized was that, you know, you have to still allow them to be kids first and just be there. You know, time is always important. You know, when I'm talking to Tara a lot of times, she'll notice that I start a lot of my sentences off as I remember my dad and I. And then I go into a story. You know, it just has so many great living memories. Uh, you know, even to this day, I still have great memories from both my parents. And it's just good to know what how I was brought up. You know, mm -hmm. just the experiences of going fishing with my dad, you know, going out in the yard, playing ball or whatever, taking us to the, the baseball games. So I knew that had to be an important aspect in the development of our children's lives. And, you know, we just balance it all. Everyone has strong suits in the, mm -hmm. in the household uh, as well as in business. And we know how to just hone in on each person's strengths. You know, we, we, we try to stay out of each other's lane if we know that's their strength area. So it's like, hey. That's your strong suit. So you handle that. You know, so many different things. When it, like technology, for an example, I leave that to my smart Navy technician over here. <laughs> and you know, I know that's her lane. That's her avenue. So what we do is ensure that um, all of the parts of the machine are well lubricated and operating to its maximum optimal hmm. uh, condition. I see. Tara. What about you? What would what would you be able to say on that? Uh, thanking you, Sean, for sharing. What would you uh, be able to share with us? 
Um, I think we do a good job of balance, especially Sean, because he, he does a lot of the work, but he always makes sure there's time for me and the for all of us together with the kids, but he also makes sure there's times where there's just me and him. So we might do a family trip and everybody goes. We went to Jamaica in, um, in June and my mom came, my sister, my niece, my nephews, but in July for our anniversary, there was just me and him with mm. Thailand and Dubai. And he has a way that he can he can do business from his phone where we're remote. And so we still get to spend time together. I see. And that's so very important as a married couple uh, and having a family, uh, spending that uh, important time with each other. Because uh, to, in today's world, and there's no exception, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure in Atlanta, Georgia, as much as here in St. Martin, you know how the time is today. Uh, you have parents who are having to work two jobs and even self, you have those who have three. Imagine if a person who has a business and uh, Sean, you know, you have your companies, etc. cetera. Um, how that can lead to the fact that there's such less time spent with your children or even self spent with each other as a married couple. So it's very important that um, as you share with the listeners, uh, that you are able to spend that quality time with each other and be able to just say, you know what, uh, we're just switching off from the world and we're actually having that uh, quality time with each other as husband and wife or even with the children as a family. If I may ask, how long are you guys married? How long have you been married? We've been married for a year now. Uh, we've known each other for nearly 10 years. So we just got married last year in Costa Rica. Wow, last year, 20, 2017, is that right? Yes. In Costa Rica, beautiful place. And uh, you know each other, I, I just missed that because of the, the delay. You've been, you know each other for how long, you said? I'm sorry, your volume went down a little bit. Yes, I, I missed that because of the delay a while ago. How long do you know each other? We've known each other for 10 years. Okay, 10 years. Lovely 10 uh -huh. years. And then decided to... Uh, to definitely um, uh, tie that knot. And over this year, being a couple, um, what would you say um, for those who may be listening now who just got married? Because uh, I know of quite a few persons who uh, just tied a knot in July. Uh, what can you share with them uh, for being married over a year? What kind of uh, advice would you be able to give to them? I think the biggest thing is our communication. Both my parents, they are hitting their 50th year anniversary this year. And, you know, just over the years, I'd always ask mom and dad, how did you guys make it work? You know, how do, how do y'all stay together? And I know there had to have been, uh, you know, just challenges through a 50-year marriage. Uh, my dad was 19, my mom was 17, and he actually had to travel to Vietnam War. And to this day, they both give me the same answer. It has not changed since I've known them. And the answer is communication, communication, communication. Mm -hmm. They both talk about, you know, being able to communicate about stuff and, you know, doing it in a responsible fashion. You know, there's ways to communicate at a high volume, <laughs> argumentative way. But then there's also a way to communicate where you can be civil mm -hmm. and discuss stuff, know when to take time. Hey, cool off. You know, my place of serenity is going to the gym to go work out and, you know, give me an opportunity to get my thoughts together, uh, get clarity of thought. So, you know, the biggest thing and that comes again with knowing each other's strengths and knowing, you know what, I think she needs a little time right now. Or I can see the kids are getting to her a little bit. So let me take the kids to the park. Let's go get some ice cream or something like that. And it gives us an opportunity to all refresh and recharge our batteries. Because what I realized, you know, a lot of times you have to slow down the speed up. So many mm -hmm. times you can be in such a, uh, a big grind and just ready to get everything done. But sometimes you have to slow down, assess, Kind of like a doctor, you have to assess these symptoms and be able to diagnose a good remedy to uh, a solution mm. to move forward. And right. uh, I think that's one of the things we do. And, and again, realizing each other's strengths. You know, she she knows my strengths, I know hers, and it allows us an opportunity to also put the other person in an uncomfortable position to strengthen them. Because a lot of times, you know, we can rely on that other person like her. I know she's an expert with technology. Mm. And, you know, sometimes I, I know that I'll be in a situation where I don't have her there to set up a, a podcast or something. So I was like, okay, Sean, you got to figure this thing out. Or, you know, humble yourself and, and ask, okay, how do I do this? And then how does that work? So in the future, if there's a situation, then I can know how to handle that. And same thing with her. You know, I put her in, in situations where I give her a scenario. And I say, what would you do 
if this particular incident happened. Mm-hmm. And it may be something extreme where she's like, wow, I never thought about that. You know, something as simple as what I call the exile factor. You know, if you were exiled out of the equation, what happens to your family financial? What happens to the legacy? You know, just the steps of how to conduct yourself and take care of the family. So I think that's uh, one of the big things that help uh, a couple out in a marriage. I see. Sean, thank you for sharing that. Tara, what can you say from you, and especially to encourage hus- uh, encourage wives out there? <laughs> well, I think a misconception people have um, about marriage is that they get in this beautiful dress, they walk down the aisle, and from there everything is just going to be blissful for forever. <laughs> but, um, you know, you do have disagreements, and, you know, we disagree on business sometimes, and sometimes it spills over into personal. But like Sean said, we had to realize that, okay, we need some time. I might go downstairs and watch a movie and he's upstairs doing what he's doing. And then once we both cooled off, and we can come back together and say, okay, let's talk about this. Mm. And we can come to an agreement and it's good from there. And of course, at the end of the day, you just you continue on as, uh, you know, a, a couple uh, really sharing your love for each other and empowering each other uh, to be able to also be there for your children. Um, I think that's really um, invaluable advice uh, for not only uh, newlyweds right now listening, but also too for those who, uh, you know, have been married now for five years, uh, 10 years, um, because you can never get enough of that really invaluable information or advice to encourage you in your marriage. So I really thank you for sharing that you know, from on your end. And I just wanted to also check in with you, Tara, in terms of your, your professional life, because as uh, you know, I shared with the listeners a while ago, uh, you have a degree in health information technology. Can you share a little bit with us on what it entails? What do you do on a daily basis? Absolutely. Um, with everybody's business, I'm always on the technical side. So it could be posting things to social media to drive business to each of our websites. Um, it could be building a white a website further, ad- adding products. It could be um, getting tools that we'll need for a presentation that Sean might need. We have a projector. So we have all kinds of tools that we use um, that are technical. It's hooking up, you know, a, a laptop to the projector. Um, I have a tool where he can use his phone and project project his PowerPoint presentation. Right. And um. With Caden's book that he has coming out um, in a couple weeks, uh, I'm the one who, who formats it and puts things together. I'm in contact with the printers. I'm in contact with um, the, sh- the people who are shipping things. So I'm in contact with everything that's going on behind the scenes. I see. Well, you've really given a, a wonderful explanation to uh, everyone on what you do. And I can, I can tell at the end of the day, it's not just, uh, you know, you get up in the morning, you say, okay, there's just one task. And then you say, okay, that's it for the day. Uh, there's much more that you have to do to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Is there something, yeah. Sean, you wanted to add? Or because I see your, you look like you want yeah, to say uh, something. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of times when we're doing interviews or uh, radio TV spots, you know, the, they highlight me, they highlight the kids, but none of this can happen if it wasn't for Tara. I mean, she's behind, like, the book. She actually, she didn't go into it. She actually did the illustration processing of the book uh, as far as the book cover, the design. She has a, a huge knack with creativity and being able to um, articulate what it is that she wants mm. the vision to be. Right. For, for, for an example, I would throw out a vision and say, hey, look, this is what I'm looking, and this is the direction we're looking to go in, and I kind of just throw it all on her plate but I can rest assured that she always come back and bring it back better than what I was expecting it to be. Right. You know, some like with the activity book that Kate is coming out with, it's on a whole nother level that I didn't even think about. And I threw it at her and I even uh, cross promoted in advance and put it out on a platform that we're going to have uh, a few more books come out before next springtime. And while I was going live in this interview, she just looked over at me like, uh, who, who nominated me for this? <laughs> but it's something that I knew that she could do. And, you know, when you're when you're in a position where you're uh, forced to perform in a good, positive way, you're going to get great results because it forces mm-hmm. your creativity. You know, yes. I always tell us, like, you know, if you squeeze a, a, an orange, you're going to get orange juice. If you squeeze a lemon, you're going to get lemon juice. So we have to ask ourselves as people, if you're if uh, someone squeezes you, what comes out of you? And it's mm-hmm. whatever is inside of you. That's so, right. you know, I, I, I push her to the next level all the time. And I'm always, like I say, given scenarios to be like if i was incapacitated she can run the the business and do them effectively 
So, yeah. you know, I, th- I think that's a big thing. And just being able to, like I say, keep the cohesiveness with the family. That, that's what's really important. You know, yesterday we went to the park. Uh, we, we did some photo shoots and did a couple of videos. More importantly, you know, the kids took the scooters, the bicycles out. We had a lot of fun, a lot of laughter. And I think that's the biggest thing is just been able to just keep a good, harmonious balance mm. and letting the kids still be kids without uh, missing over that childhood, but to also instill them responsibilities and learn about financial uh, literacy. I see. Really, really great advice. You know, I want to just actually pick up on something here and especially for the listeners out there. What I recognize with both of you is that you really complement each other in a very honest and uh, genuine way. And that's so very important because you do sometimes have couples out there who um, you may have the husband and he may feel in somewhat way um, inferior to the wife because she's stronger in the area. Then that leads to arguments. But it's so very important to be able to acknowledge and amplify um, what your wife is good at doing or your mm-hmm. husband and even in public uh, to, to let persons know, hey, I'm super proud of my lovely wife. I'm super, super proud of my handsome husband. Um, you know, this is what he's good at. He's uh, a great husband, etc. It's so very important. So I really appreciate that that you shared with the listeners. And as I speak with you and I look at both of you, I can see how young you look. The listeners could only hear that I'm saying that. But um, I don't know if you want to disclose uh, how old you are so they, they know how young this couple is here and doing really great work. Sure. I'm, I'm 46 and okay. she's 34. All right. Great stuff. 46 and 34. Two young people doing an awesome job. So congratulations to you. Definitely. So that gives me inspiration. I'm still young, too. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) So let's talk a little bit about um, uh, Sean and Tara. Let's talk a little bit about what you're doing with the children, because you mentioned a while ago briefly about books and uh, this is so very important right now that I want to, us to touch base on because today, you know, there are families out there who may feel so frustrated um, with the times that we're in. It's challenging. And, uh, you know, on St. Martin and some other islands, we, we came out of Hurricane Irma last September, a year ago, in a few days. And for many persons out there, uh, it's challenging financially. And, you know, um, Sean, you are an expert in what you do. You have quite some businesses. And uh, as it was stated here, you are known as America's leading voice when it comes to helping families create generational wealth through building multiple streams of income. Why I'm saying this is because right now on St. Martin, uh, for some families, some persons, they're out of work. And they may be like, what in the world can I do now with my life? Uh, they may have children and they're like, what can I do? I have my, my 16-year-old son or I have my 10-year-old boy or daughter. What, how, how, how can I move forward? But you're doing something awesome with your children. And I just want you to share with the listeners out there so that they know what could be possible too with their children to take them to another level. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, uh, St. Martin is one of my favorite places to travel. I, I love the whole Caribbean and the, the thing I love about it so much is just the the unity. I like the spirituality that's in the Caribbean where everyone is spiritually based. And it's just a sense of family. You know, I took uh, took my family. I've been to Jamaica numerous times. Uh, I brought the family to Jamaica this year. And, you know, one of the biggest things that I kept raving about was watch at how close you become family, you know, and you don't get that here in the States so much. It's more of a commercialized, you know, it's just what I can get. You, you're not helping the next person. So in, in what's going on in the Caribbean and in several places, you know, we just had this other storm come through. Uh, what's going on in Puerto Rico, St. Martin, all these different places that it's like people overlook what happened and it's like they're forgotten about. But what I recommend, you know, is just come together together and be a family. No, we pray together, we stay together, and just, you know, help help your fellow neighbor. You know, it's, it's like, okay, we had devastation, and I got to get mine, but I'm not focused on you getting yours either. But see, if I help you in your situation, that'll put you in a position where it lifts you up, elevate you on a platform that could later 
elevate me in a higher platform through uh, your sphere of influence with people that you may have met that may say, hey, 